to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Back, James. Oh. We're back from New Orleans. New Orleans. Back. Yeah. Back in the New York. Uh, the Stones were incredible. Really incredible. My God, man. I'm so glad I got to see them one last time. You think it's the last time? He had a little hitch in his giddy up. Mick? Yeah. No, Mick was fine. M- Mick it was, was ra- great. Mick pulled his fucking shirt up like four or five times during the show. Like, Mick oh, was fine. Yeah. He's looking great. Keith and Ron. Uh, no, Ronnie's moving good. Keith Keith is not moving. Not moving so great. Not much anymore. But they played like a, what was it, a three-hour show? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was lights out. Yeah. Lights out. And, and seeing them once again reinforced how shitty today's music really is. Oh, my God. For me, at least. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I looked so just on the way in, on the drive into the studio today, I, I peeped on over to uh, iTunes just to see what their hot, what you got for me? sexy, flirty album was. What are your hot tracks? Yeah. Give me your hot tracks. Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. His new album, that was his hot track. That was the hot track for iTunes, the whole fucking thing. I breeze through it, sure. you know. I'm a, I'm an eclectic musical. You'll give it a chance. Connoisseur. You'll give it a ch- a chance. I did. Um, Ed Ed Sheeran though really uh, jumped the shark on this. There well, was... He's always sucked. Oh yeah. Oh, he has. Okay. Yeah, I... he's always sucked, and he somehow has this weird ginger spell over everyone. Where they, I I feel like I'm being pranked. I felt like I've been being pranked this whole time. With Ed Sheeran. With Ed Sheeran and Sushi. But with Ed Sheeran specifically, where it's sure. going to be like someday they're going to wake up and be like, ha ha, Jesse, we got you. Right. I got down on Ed Sheeran with, I'm on my way, driving that Reluctantly, buggy. I did yeah. as well. But um, wasn't that one of the ones that he stole? I think it might have been. He's mm-hmm. he's up for a couple fraudulent uh, charges of of thievery right now, which <laughs> I don't know if that's how he's. Uh, <laughs> I don't it, fraudulent charges of thievery. You know how this yeah. started, right? <laughs> um, no. So our artists are saying, "Hey, man, we love your new album," and they're doing these interviews, and they're like, "What was your inspiration?" Okay. Well, I was listening to a lot of Marvin Gaye. Right. Boom, Mar- Marvin Gaye's family sure sues the shit out of him. Sure. And it's like. Man, I I think we listened to one of them, though, that he was being fraudulently charged with thievery. And we were like, hmm, it was a it was a bit too close. Or was it Tom Petty? Petty. Remember, it was yeah, Petty yeah, yeah, with yeah. Sheeran. But and we go mm. same thing. So he was like, I was listening to a lot of Petty during that album. And then he but he ended up giving credit to Petty on the thing. And, you know, I got sure. solved, I guess. But sure. Um, this album it's all like features. So mm-hmm. every song of Ed Sheeran is a feature. So it's Ed Sheeran, Cardi B. Right. That was a real one. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of her lines in, one, in, in the song that she did with him was, I think Ed got a little bit of that jungle fever. Yep. Which Just off the cuff. made me cringe for not only my race, but also the black race as well, where I was just sort of Puerto Rican or whatever she is. Sure. I cringe for every race on earth, um, except for Latinos, I think, during that one. I cringed more for white people. Be- on, the, on the one with Eminem? Uh, all of it. Uh, just all of it, because it's, it's just Ed Sheeran being like, hey, guys, my name is Ed, and I'm here to say yeah. I can rap. Every day, and I look around and I see my peeps, and I, yeah. right? And so it's so it, it made me, it's the same uncomfortable feeling that I get when people, uh, white people do any kind of rapping like that. So uh, there, there's, yeah, there's, there's a, a track with Ed Sheeran, Eminem, mm-hmm. and 50 Cent on the same song. Yeah. 
it is awful um cringy i feel like you're saying you cringe for all the races i cringe for all of mankind play this at guantanamo if you're trying to get some information out of somebody yep on a loop yeah uh, they'll Me- maybe go halfway through before Meek they give Mill you was on all. another track yep Meek Mill was on another Ed mm-hmm. Sheeran track. After that, um, I almost, I almost unplugged my phone from the charger and threw it out the window because mm-hmm. it was connected to the radio mm-hmm. on Apple Music, and I hated, I hated my life um, yeah. for it. And, and again, then I just was like, man, I, I don't know what's left after the Rolling Stones die. Yeah, I don't know where we go. Who do we got left? There's a few bands that I still like rock wise, but mm-hmm. like then it's fucking Ed Sheeran. That's what we're left with. Yeah. That's awful. It is sad. Ugh. So I, yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm in a bad mood because of that album on the way over. Right. And it's crazy that music makes me do that where I'm like, God damn it, man, that really pissed me off. I'm really angry about it. And if you go to Apple music, which everybody in god's green earth has right now right mm-hmm. it's just a, at the top of the page for you know hot tracks or whatever the, the fuck the name of it is this is it's his, his smug. smug smiling face of mm, look at is. all the people i got on my album which i don't i mean everybody says he's the one of the greatest songwriters there is so maybe the hope was that again but i'm being pranked like i do not believe it it's, I, I don't believe that it's really happening. And I look around all the time to be like, this is crazy, right? Yeah. And people are like, no, nope, he's amazing. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm like in the cult. I, I'm like in the middle of the cult. And everyone's like, yep, isn't Ed Sheeran the best? Yeah. And I'm like, you guys, we need to go. Like, we need to get out of here. He has us brainwashed. It's 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 crazy. And then I think back We're going to, to Jonestown. I think back at the, like to the Stones concert where Mick was like, I haven't played this one in you know 51 years or whatever it was, and it's Gimme Shelter, and you're like, and you're just like, holy and it, shit. all of it holds up. If you get a chance to see them, doesn't matter where you're at in the stadium, go watch Mick run for 15 miles all over every single inch of that stage. And it's like, it's just hit after hit after hit that is endless. And it's the, the music itself. You're like, you're dating back to like 1967. Yeah. It's, it, and it, all of it holds up because there's some music you listen to, you put on, you're like, oh man, that fucking sucks. I can't like, that doesn't hold up to me. Right. Um, but the stones still like you hear, I guess because you hear their music and so many movies, you know, big movies like Scorsese movies and well, shit. Well, they where you're scored just like, like our life and it's dad rock. So a lot of the memories. I don't that, know that it is. That and it I, is I, what? I, that it's dad rock. And the reason why For I say this is, is. So the memories that I have, and I think the memories that you have too, is of our parents playing this music on vinyl at parties or just in the background. And it's sort of in happy times or exciting times or whatever, we're in the background of our life. And you have stories like that too. So I do. that's what I mean by dad rock. But, but here's the difference. At a certain point, you kind of fight your parents, right? On their music versus yours. I know I did. Okay. So I remember, you know, as a kid in the late 80s or whatever, right? My, my dad was always playing Rolling Stones still. And I was like, hey man, the new, let's put on Appetite for Destruction. Right. Let's put on GNR. No, you do have a moment. You do have a moment of that. And he was like, this is fucking terrible. And I, his exact words were uh, that and like Poison, right? I, like, I remember those two bands in particular at that time, you know, as a kid where I was just like, these bands are awesome, you know, whatever. And I remember the time my dad saying the exact phrase. He goes, because uh, I asked him to turn off the Rolling Stones. And, uh, and he goes, this, this is what you listen to? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, this is, this is shit. Like, this is awful. And he goes, and I was like, this is way better than the Stones. And he goes, if you think this music is going to hold up in 30 to 40 years, you're out of your mind. Right? And I was like, they're going to live Shut forever. Up, Dad. Both are going to be awesome. The times are changing, brother. Yeah. And then, I, like, I remember maybe five years after that, right? Guns N' Roses was kind of no longer... The hair, the hair metal from the 80s, you know, 
was kind of oh, gone. Yeah. And I fad? remember having more thoughtful musical conversations with him. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I went back to that same question, right? Because the Stones were still playing. And they put out like Voodoo Lounge, I think at the time, um, which was another new album in the 90s. And you're like, all right, fuck. And they had a couple hits off of it. And I remember going back and I was like, all right, I think these bands might hold up, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and those, the two bands that I referenced are still around. It was Pearl Jam um, okay. and uh, uh, Dave Matthews Band. Okay. Both are Pearl still, Jam still rocking. I, neither of them are really putting out new albums, but let's right. face it. I don't, the Stones haven't put out an original album no. since the 90s. I, I don't think. Um, the last album they put out was great, but it was covers. It was blues um, about two years ago. And I think, I, I think Pearl Jam will probably tour until they can because they love it. I think Dave totally. Matthews' band will probably tour until yeah. they can because they love it. Neither band, though, had a gajillion hits that are as lasting as the Rolling Stones. Right. Uh, but I think they will last. Uh, one, and my, by the way, I'll preface this for the audience. My, my dad was a radio disc jockey, so he listened to everything across mm-hmm. the board for 30 years, right? There was one band that he thought was interesting, but he said they're, they'll burn out real quick, and it was Nirvana. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And he goes, they're re- this is a really interesting band right now, but he goes, I, I, this, this, I, can, I can tell you right now, this is a band that's going to burn out really quickly. And I said, how? He skated the drug issue, you know, probably because I was too young, but mm-hmm. uh, I, I think that's probably what he meant. And then going back to it, on the, at the show on Monday, thinking back to those memories and, and those conversations, like he was right. I mean, fuck, man, they're still doing it at a, at a an extremely high level. I mean, mix it's, sounded great. Um, you know, they use a little bit more background singers now. Yeah, but uh, you know, for a band that's been touring for fifty five years at this point, like. But we had this conversation too when I say. I'm glad I got to see them for the last time. I don't know. I hope you're right that they know when to quit touring. Do you know what I'm saying? I think somebody's going to have to die. Someone's going to have to die. So for me, I don't want to see them any more, I guess, like on the downward spiral. Okay. On the down side of the hill. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see them any worse any any more than they were like to me i thought they were again still hold still held up yep running around the stage partying loving it seems like they were still having fun oh yeah 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 um and you kind of want to remember because you know the rock stars that always do that one last show and you're like yeah gosh they just don't sound good they're not looking good i don't want That's, that to happen and so when i say i'm glad i got to see him for the last time i think for me it was a perfect show it was the memory that i want to have of them if they do keep touring and you want to go that's fine <laughs> but for me i want that to be because i saw a little glimmer of it and i don't want it to be like anyone wheeled out onto the stage i don't want anyone like not able to run around and just sort of sitting in one place i don't want that it's funny you say that because that's what i felt at aerosmith um and and here's they're a little bit younger so they're still yeah yeah, they're younger and they sounded like shit right um and and i mean it was crazy to me and i wasn't there to see aerosmith by the way so anybody at home was just like yo did you really go to an Aerosmith concert? No, no. they they uh, Post Malone. They were playing with Post Malone, so I went and saw Post Malone. Right, and it was so bad that we. I, I walked out. I think after the third song of Aerosmith, um, luckily Post Malone was up first, so it was just like. Deuces, I think that's but, for other reasons where they're that memory, not you're right. as into it. As I don't they know used to be, and that's not. But that you, cool, you're right but... that that memory, that lasting memory, I will have now of Aerosmith will be that versus. And I was worried about this show because he had just had the surgery and I know he would go back out there and he will hobble, hobble around the stage. Like I know he will do it. He's got a young wife. He's got to fucking keep shit going. Right. Right. So I knew he would do it, but I was worried a little bit. And I was like, I please don't, I've seen them (laughs) enough and I've seen them great that I don't want, I didn't want it to be (sighs) a bad memory. And it wasn't, but I think I was really on the edge. I think it was really on the edge. 
And so, again, if they go and tour and you would like to go, feel free. Yeah, yeah, I'll go without you. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I want that memory <laughs> that I had because it was like, you know, we were awesome seats, super close. They played every song I wanted to play. It was, it was perfect, right? Yeah, 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 it was great. Even that couple that was... Well, so we, th- we'll go there. Oh, but I want to say one more thing. Sorry. Just circling back to where you um, kind of fight with your parents for a second. I yeah. have a cringy moment. Uh, my, one of my dad's favorite songs is Eric Clapton, um, S- Tears in Heaven. Yeah. And I love it too. And I love him. But there was like a moment that I was going through, whatever age, where I was like, it's okay. But I feel like... If Whitney Houston sang it, it would be way better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like his yeah. voice is just not good. My dad was like, holy shit. Right? Yeah. But that was like my one moment of like <laughs> I was into Whitney or this, the voice has to be perfect. I didn't understand at that moment things like Bob Dylan or Neil Young or whatever where the voice that they have is the exact, is the song. You know what I mean? The yeah. emotion, it's not beautiful. But it is exactly what it's supposed to be, right? Uh, by, by the way, so Bob Dylan for me was awful as well. And that was, Bob Dylan was awful. I saw him 20 years ago. He was awful. And uh, I've never seen him live. I've never live. wanted to. And I, the, after that, I was but like, I'm I good. Love Bob I'm glad Dylan I got to see albums, him in yeah. person just to say I did it. But it was terrible live and I never went back. And he's still playing. And every time I see him like touring, I'm like, oh my God. If it was bad 20 years, what what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. You know? Uh, but yeah, it was crazy. Uh, the couples that we ran into. So you, this is usually my MO of getting drunk and like um, befriending weird people. That yeah. you're like, oh my God, get, no, we're not hanging out with them, right? Yeah. You ended up doing it this time. Not on purpose. Not on purpose, but you, you, you started talking to some couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking to this couple, and they knew the drinking bros or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, we exchanged information and all that stuff. And they were like, "Yeah, we'll rage at the concert." Homegirl showed up. It was a couple. Homegirl showed up. It it looked like she was on three sheets of acid. I don't know what it was. She was backwards. So she was facing doing backwards this yeah. thing where she wouldn't. And he kept having to say, like, stand up straight. So she was leaning all the way back, all the way back, looking. I'll just do it. But like this. <laughs> if you're watching the video show, standing YouTube, up straight, like not yeah. falling back, but just only like looking at the ceiling like something's going on there. Older couple. Yep. OK. Uh. But yeah, not that old. Like they were late forties, right? Yeah, she was. She was mid forties. He was late forties. But um, yeah, they just got. They started drinking. Too fucked too up. Too fucked up for the concert, and, and they the had show. to leave before the show even before started. Before the show, and they were diehard. They had <laughs> stayed in town. They're following them to Miami, and they made it down to the floor. So like, oh, and they were front. Yeah. Row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was trying to keep it going, and she just was. He gave the old, I love the stones, but, you know, I love my, my wife more, and I got I to gotta take care of her. I was like, man. It would have been romantic, but he was holding a stiff-as-a-board woman yep. that was just wanting uh, to uh, lay down, I guess. It looked like well, one I of those don't know what that drug women is. crawling up a wall. On one of the horror films, we were like, oh, you're, yeah. that's, that's an unnatural movement. You're yeah, making. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, they're possessed and yeah, they yeah, kind of yeah. do this like <laughs> weird retching thing. That's, that's, that was her. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the other one was, there was another couple next to me and I, they, the woman didn't seem very old. Uh, she was probably 45, maybe, something like that. Mm-hmm. Her husband seems a little older, maybe mm-hmm. 50, 55, somewhere in there, right? Yeah. And uh, she leaned over and was just like, is there, does anybody have any, any, any weed? You know, yeah, weed? it was and very I was like, strange. And I go, hey, man, uh, 
everyone here everyone has here has got weed the like, guy behind her that we all kind of like lifted a, up the pen everybody like, and she yeah. was like D- does nobody smoke like actual weed anymore and i was like no they don't and mm-hmm. I, it was like 95 pens that everybody offered her yeah um of, you know the vape pens or whatever and she was like oh i've never never had this before and then boom welcome to the new world for her but yeah uh, and she was like, can I have some more? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was pretty funny where you're just like, oh, man. She was definitely narky vibes. Like, I was like, what the fuck? Like, I just haven't seen that because it's so easy to get. Yeah. Because for, she can us, just everywhere walk we go. in somewhere and buy it. So it's kind of like for someone to be like, hey, hey, guys. Yeah. Do you have any weed? I just immediately think cop. But I guess that doesn't matter either. And every event I legal. go to. I get offered weed or somebody's got weed. Somebody's got a vape pen or whatever. I mean, this was, this was dating. And not like, again, not marijuana, just these pens, right? Yeah. And I was like at the Super Bowl a couple years ago. Right. Um, it was like, eh, great. Everybody's doing it. Like, n- nobody cared then. So it was, it was weird to get tapped on the shoulder of it like, was hey, weird. I was kind of like. You thought, you thought we were going to get arrested. You yeah, but like, then I'm like, but it's not illegal. So then I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I'm just like, hey, guys. There's still some people out there who don't know. They just don't know, James. She wasn't drinking or anything. No. She was just kind of like. Psst, Living her life. Psst, weed. 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 I was all, girl, please. Yeah. Now, if you're, if you're asking your for shit. drugs, yeah, I mean, you got to yeah. bust out Coke. And yeah. Coke. Like that, at that point. Heron? Like we're past whispering about weed. Yeah. So it's like if you're gonna come up like, hey, got any acid or something like yeah. that. It was like, oh, okay. It was very ASMR, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's strange. Uh, I dude, I want to talk about this Instagram thing that popped up today. We talked about this several months ago about this being a possibility. They're actually doing it today in in Australia. Uh, they're disabling likes. Yeah. So you don't like you can't see the number of likes that a picture got anymore. So you can't like at all. You can. You just can't see how many unless you pay them. No, there's no as of now. As there's of no now, there's fee. not. But that's what they're. Um, there's no nothing. That's so they're grooming they've for. stated that this is to get people to post what they actually want to post and get Instagram so what it was originally made for, nope. which is it was posting made. for your things and stuff and all the blahs. What it was made for was to make Zuck money. Yeah. Not the influencers that are making a bunch of money without giving him a cut. That has, that has to be it, right? That's always it. Don't ever, and I've always said this, don't ever think that those motherfuckers give a shit about you and about what Instagram was supposed to be right. and about your, your mental health. Not for one fucking second. They are gearing up and grooming and f- situating themselves so that if you want to look at your dashboard as far as what, like, for example, our podcast, uh-huh. you want to be able to see how many people are listening, how many people are liking it. Right. You have to pay to do that. And with anything, Instagram, it's like they're, they're seeing so many people get paid 500000 200000 hundred thousand dollars for a picture. Yeah. And they're not getting a cut of that. And they don't like that. So to be honest, right, thinking about it today, since the likes won't matter anymore, eventually when it moves to America, it's not here yet, but it, it will be. I'll think I'll just post whatever I want all day long. I used to go on a pattern of like, hey, well, you can only post once a day. Still- available who right? cares yeah, yeah yeah like for me that, that doesn't matter okay i don't really give a shit about people's yeah, comments yeah, yeah. um matter of fact it might turn them off there you go for real like i there's no likes no comments and what i only have it, like then? fifty thousand not... followers so to me that's not enough to really monetize to a level of like uh a logan paul or an amanda cerny or the and rock that's the thing. Or... it's not going to affect us really no. It's going to affect people that make a living off of Instagram, off of Instagram only. So yeah. the Instagram influencers that, again, people are not paying. So Instagram has a sponsored situation. So you can pay to advertise on Instagram. Yes. They're not doing that. They're going straight to the influencers. Right. And Instagram doesn't like that. So 
you know, it's all going to fucking turn into what it's supposed to turn into. And then it'll be another app that we're all going to use. But so th- th- what they said was, oh, you're still going to have your analytics and all that stuff like behind your own page. You know, you, you have mm-hmm. to flip behind your page and look at it mm-hmm. for me. I, I treat it, I guess, you know, you hear this for so long that, you know, you've been in movies, you, you know, you have podcasts, books, all that stuff out there. You know, you've got to be focus on what your likes ratio is to picture how many times you're posting a day um, what that will do to the algorithm and all that other stuff right because you know if you post 50 times a day obviously it's going to bump you down the algorithm and it's only going to show you certain shit Mm -hmm. right now if that happens to the u.s i don't think i'm going to care if you can't see the likes anyways fuck it i'm just going to post weird shit and then Whatever it is, it is. If I want to post pictures of my kids and shit, I'm going to. I so felt bad can about it in the past. See followers, I think. Yeah, but you still to, to see followers, you still have to swipe over and go behind the page. Mm-hmm. Where I don't fucking care. It's great. Who's gonna do that extra swipe? I'm not going to. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, take Theo Vaughn or somebody. Right? We've been trying to get him on the show for a long time. I have no idea how many followers Theo Vaughn has. Really don't. Um, the, the the people I do are probably like the most famous where it's like Kim Kardashian, things like right. that, where you're just you're checking just to check of like, oh, Jesus, you have that many followers. Yeah, yeah. But for most people, like, eh, I don't really check. I don't think okay. I don't know if you do. I don't. Therefore, I'll I think I'll, I think I'll probably just post whatever I want. Yeah. Um, probably lose followers, I guess. But who fucking cares? Because it was all about the, you know, how many likes you were getting. And if and if you, you know, there was a certain number you had to hit because we sat. I sat down with the analytic team. Like you should be getting X per photo or per video or whatever. And it's like if you can't see that, who fucking cares? Right? Who cares? Well, so, you no, know I don't. No. Well, I think will you anymore? I guess is the question because you stop posting about your kids and things like that. Like, but I'll still lose followers. So yeah, if I you, post about kids, what do you care though? Um. And I think that's where I'm at is what, what do I care if I was, I if it was my business still matter to who, if, if it was your business and you're making money off of it, right. Mm-hmm. Then it would matter for us. What do you have? Like 10, 11,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I get 50. I, again, those numbers aren't enough to go out and shop to like a, a Nike or a fucking mm-hmm. target and say, Hey, I want to get paid for these posts. It's just not. So what do you do then? I guess for me, I don't know if I'll care anymore. Yeah. Okay. I think it's going to change a lot of shit. I really do. Um, I think you're right. Instagram's going to hit you up more and more to get paid because that's what Facebook does. And I don't know if you noticed that or if you're, if you're not on it enough. Yeah. But I'm on it a lot for the podcast and uh, promoting these books and movies well, and Instagram shit. Well, Instagram will ask me constantly to boost, boost stuff. Boost the post, yeah. 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 So, so and same with Facebook. So it's just kind of like, no. With this... Because I, I like with the, you know, now I keep getting these coupons of like $10 for boost your Facebook posts and all this other shit. And I'm like, no, if it gets 38 likes, whatever it does, man, I don't give a shit because it's all it's all fucking rigged. Yeah. I mean, you take Facebook alone. I have 21,000 followers is what it says, right? Um, 21,000 followers. I have over 19 million views on videos on my page. 21,000 followers fuck is that yeah like that's that number should be way higher uh one this one post about uh i posted a picture of like summer swayze t-shirts you know because it was a link to another company that was not facebook supported got 38 likes Mm -hmm. everybody has this fucking shirt it's sold out sold out everywhere like 38 fucking likes on facebook out of 21,000 followers or whatever bone off dude Mm -hmm. you're not they're not just not showing it to anybody so if they're not showing it to anybody and they want you to pay which i so i stopped caring about facebook for that reason yeah i was like oh well fuck off i'm not going to keep paying for this stupid shit yeah um the gain the juice really wasn't worth the squeeze in that Mm -hmm. once i got down to the analytics of the back end numbers of it i was just like oh sweet people are watching a video in an extra six seconds yeah beef off dude so now the same thing's going to happen with, with Instagram. Yeah, mm-hmm. you beef off and bone off. Same thing's going to happen with Instagram. What do I give a shit? Yeah. Now, if I was, again, making a living off of this, 
I'd be real goddamn that's concerned. That's what I mean. So yeah. they're pissed. Um, and I think that's why, I think, I think the bigger influencers knew this before. I, I still hate the word influencer, but um, I think the bigger people like the Logan Paul and Amanda Cerny knew better. And I don't know if you noticed, both of them have podcasts. Logan Paul's is huge. Amanda Cerny has one? Oh, yeah. Oh. And I think that was part of the reason why of like, hey, let's go and start monetizing this on Facebook Watch and YouTube because mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to monetize our Instagram anymore. Right. That's just a guess. So we'll see. But uh, um, I can't tell if I, if I like this or not. I think for me personally, I'll, I'll just care less. Well, I'll just post a bunch of weird shit. There you go. Um, but yeah, without the likes anymore, eh, who cares? People will be like, oh, great. Cute baby or whatever it is. Because like, like you take somebody as big as Tom Hardy, who clearly doesn't need money, doesn't get paid from Instagram or anything. Right. When he started his account, which wasn't very long ago, he turned off the comments. Yeah. So what he posts is just like pictures of him doing sh cool he shit. He not give a shit. Uh, Drake. <clears throat> Drake has got a gajillion followers, right? Right. I tried to comment on one of Drake's posts, and uh, you disabled. So, and it and it wasn't me, but it pops up a thing that just says, "Sorry, Drake only allows 150 people to come on his thing." And I'm like, "Oh, so like he a. only has like close friends." That yes. Are, okay. And it's all like blue checkmark people, and I'm like, "I'm fucking one of those." Nope, I'm not. I'm not a friend to Drake, so I couldn't comment. And I was like, "Oh." What the fuck does it matter then? And I th that kind of bled over into the rest of this for me, where I was just like, eh, I'll yeah. stop caring, just post a bunch of weird shit, and then people can watch it or, or not, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the effect of, of uh, that'll have on Instagram stories, though. Because why watch a story? If you're not, it's like, if I can just post shit all day and nobody's going to like it or watch it and you can't see the views, I'll just post it in the fucking main thing, you know? Main, main thing. Yeah. Just post all my weird shit in there. Because okay. we get real weird in the stories. Yeah. You so, can just post it on there. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares anymore? Again, not a tool for, you know, if I'm going to have to pay for it, not a tool for anybody but myself at that point. So might as well make it a, a party of one. Oh, I'm worried about your, worried about your Instagram <laughs> now. Stay I don't know tuned. that anybody will see it, though. Stay tuned. Since I'm not going to pay. Oh. I think it'll, it'll probably nuke the algorithm altogether. So. Yeah. Uh, the people who are paying, it'll bump theirs up. But, you know, the way that it's la la like laid out for me right now with the companies and all that shit, where it's just like right now I'm just seeing a bunch of bullshit apps for like how to brighten up your pictures. Oh, yeah. Put a rainbow in the background. It's a lot of sponsored shit. Sponsored yeah. And I'm like, stuff on but it's, it's shit that I don't like either. And I'm yeah. like, so I, I'm done with it, man. Uh, the sponsors that I do like are on this show, though. And we got them, Jabes. They still pay for this to be on the Those air, Those are the people we care about. Those are the likes that we care about. Yeah, it is. Uh, first and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Still with them 4th of July deals, son. Oh, my God. Are you serious? That's serious. When are those? They have to be ending soon. I don't know. But the show That'd goes be out crazy. Uh, probably the till the end of show the goes out tonight and it goes out in a couple hours. So they'll, they'll definitely be up tonight. But okay. yo, man, I, free pillows are back. Two hundred dollars off a of mattress, free pillows. Mm. Uh, the adjustable base package is still there. Seven ninety nine. Come on, dude. Come on, brother. That's cheaper than the bunk bed for our child or five year old child that we're getting. I know. And you get a mat. You get a ghost bed mattress. Uh, an adjustable base with a remote control that goes up I and know. down. I know. USB ports, flashlights. Like, luckily, he doesn't know about this shit, you know? Because I don't want him having that at age five. Oh, no. That'll he ruin your life. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll no, ruin your life. Him basic. Yeah, in case he turns out poor and then he was like, I don't understand. I was sleeping in a remote controlled yeah. bed as a youth. Well, son, you're, you've hit hard times. Right. Sorry about it. We don't want a Kunan in him. Yeah. Give him the master. He gets the master. Yeah. But uh, the deals are available for you guys. And if you're military or first responder, you get an extra 15% off. Just go to the bottom of the page, click it, and rip it. And stick it. And stick it. And as always, at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 
They've got 36 months, no interest, pay-as-you-go program. No one is offering that on the interwebs. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get yourself a mattress. Get a little sleep. Oh my gosh, coming back from New Orleans. I was it, like, it really oh does make a difference. Oh my God. The mattress really Great does make a difference. Great bed in New Orleans. Great bed. It was okay. It was okay. But crawling Hotels into really don't that give a shit about you, you know? ghost bed, I was like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. So happy to be back. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. I'm drinking it right now. I got some in, uh, in my water here. You had to. I uh, put a little in, in this Deer Park. 1873. Not a sponsor. Yeah, not a sponsor, but who was we had Brandon Bonfiglio on? He was like, Oh, yeah, I want to be sponsored by Kirkland Water. Mm. Uh, Strike Force Energy is the only thing that keeps me from crashing and falling down and hurting others. Yep, no carbs, no sugars, packed full of flavor. Kick the can, you don't need it anymore. It's a tasty, tiny little tin pouch. You rip it open and squeeze it into any liquid available. Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. 10-pack, 40-pack, 750-milliliter bottle. And they ship everywhere in the entire world, James. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. How do they do that? Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. Type in the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. And get on it, dude. No carbs, no sugars. Perfect for beach season. Last but not least is what you came for, Jabe. StraightRazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you rock it? Yeah. Jamie, you took your, your cans off. You took off the headphones. Smart. 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 Man, they used to jangle around my eardrums forever. Forever. Uh, we, had a, we had a gentleman pull his dick and balls out on a Drinking Bros podcast yesterday. How did that work for uh, the jujitsu? Really shorn and uh, like so shorn, clean bald. Oh, clean bald. I don't want that. Clean bald. Well, he said he used a straight razor from straightrazors.com. That's so. great. Yeah. That's great. So you take it off. Same with them pregnant bushes. Nope. He said his wife was also cleanly shorn down there. Um, so it's a, it's a couple's thing, you know? Okay. It's a couple's thing. Cool. But uh, that's, the, that's the second time I've seen a, a penis on the show. When? Episode 100. I saw oh, that guy's right. penis for two, uh, two and a half hours. That's right. Straight. But uh, yeah, I was really shocked. And he was even more shocked when I was like, hey, man, th- we are videotaping this. So Did he you... not know? He did not know. And he's... Yeah, but he didn't know they were on, hmm. you know, hmm. and uh, either way, awesome show that airs on Monday, uh, but he used straightrazors.com to shave up that D&Bs, you know, Yeah, as I like to call my, my package, the brethren, that's right? What I, that's what I call my dick balls and taint, the brethren, the brethren, yeah. so weird, clean up the Still brethren, really weird, and uh, you can get, you can get all kinds of stuff there, uh, beard oils, mustache waxes, conditioners, shampoos, and a little cologne. Everything you need to be a, a real man in this life. We love love the smolder aftershave. That's my fucking. And if you guys jam. are going, if you guys are going beard to beard, you need that. Uh, Gotta oil. have that oil you need that in beard there. Beard oil. It's gonna soften everything up, and everyone will have a good time. Swan. You gotta have that in there. Swan. It's it's sun. Uh, Straightrazors.com promo code revolution twenty percent off. Disheartening news, James. What? I was, I'm a little pissed about. I'm a little pissed What's off up? about it. I'm pissed. Gossip Girl's coming back, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of got juiced up. Went from 6 to almost midnight. It was about 11.45. Went, went to 11.45, the old wean dog. That's your dick you're talking about? Your penis? My brethren. My brethren, yeah. You're talking about your penis getting hard My when brethren. you heard about Gossip Girl. So, okay. I love Gossip Girl. Sure. Right? Um, the children's show, right? The teenage I don't know if this was discussed show. on this show, but uh, did a movie play Lively. Uh-huh. Um, and then sure you discussed it. She got this right afterwards. Uh-huh. And I was like, it was weird to see someone go from a lead in a movie to a, a lead in a TV show. I thought... Right. 
She was on Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants before that. Was it HBO before? No. Okay. And that's the thing. It was CW. Huh. So I was like, it, we had the same business manager at the time, too. And I was just like, hey, why would she go from movies to TV? And she was like, branding, man. It's all about branding. And I was like, man, that seems strange. Right. Blammo. 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 I, so I was like, all right, I'll give it a go. I watched it. Loved it. Um, and I was like, fucking A. And she became a goddamn icon from that show yeah. and turned out to be one of the smartest business decisions ever. Right. Um, I mean, dude, the endorsement deals and all that stuff was all from Gossip Girl because it was a fucking cool show that kind of reminded me of a younger Sex in the City okay. um, with uh, Chuck Bass and uh, old Leighton Meester on there, right? Chuck Bass was the goddamn show. Blair. Okay. Blair and Chuck were the show. They were my faves. Okay, no one, no one was better at playing a bad boy like Chuck Bass in okay. Gossip Girl. Big fan of his whole shit. Okay, right? You got me too. It's going through some, some, uh, some shit. I don't know okay. if any of it's true or not. Uh, a couple rape allegations right now. Again, don't know if it's true because none of these cases have materialized. Okay, so who knows? Right. It, was, it seems strange because he's fucking Chuck Bass and it's like a couple rape cases, though, doesn't ever sound good. Might be one. Sure. My, it might be one. Okay. I, I'm okay. not sure. Whatever it is, okay. I'm not sure. What I know is this. Nothing's materialized from it. Mm -hmm. So I don't fucking know. <laughs> I really don't know on this one. Acting wise, that dude was the goddamn best on that sure. show and he made it. So they're 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 at HBO. They're redoing the show. And they're bringing it back. And I'm like, all right, cool. They're bringing back everything, right? At HBO with that cast, fuck yeah, my whole brethren was in. My, all my brethren was into that show. And then they were like, nope, because it's going to take place eight years later. Okay. And in New York. So they're going to be how old at that point? Probably 30s, early 30s, right? So why can't they? Don't know. Different cast. So they're going with a different cast on it. It must have been because they couldn't get them. Um, they I, wanted to have the original cast. I promise you that. I wonder if it was Chuck Bass. I don't, and his I, I don't know. rape cases. Leighton Meester is still on a TV show. Uh, Homegirl, Blake Lively just kind of bounced. I don't. Well, she's got two, two kids. Two or three kids. Possibly yeah. three. So but she I looks don't, great. We saw her at that. Uh, on one of those red carpet fucking totally things. she looks great i just don't know i think she wants to be out of hollywood and yeah done, yeah done with that shit maybe yeah. that's what it was but and if you're it, on a show that's a if you're gonna recast this uh, that's one to me good luck with but i because I, I i love and the so idea of hbo yeah they're gonna recast the whole fucking show yeah or may i guess young i don't i don't really know what they're gonna do well it's supposed to be eight years later yeah but they can't be younger. They've got to be. Actually, I think they were in high school or college. or Yeah, so they'll probably be around 30. Okay, so it'll just be sex in the city, basically. Doesn't that sound like that? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it kind of sounded like. Because you know, when like they started, they were 30. They weren't super young when, when sex in the city started. They were 30, early 30s people, right? Yeah. Jobs, careers, things like this. So. The other part about it is it sounded a lot like, besides the murder element, like you, where, all right, great. If you're going right. to have this social media going through New York City, like and yeah, the, yeah, the ironic yeah. thing about it is Homeboy from Gossip Girl is the lead of you on Netflix. Oh, that's right. So it's strange, man. Um, I, I think don't, people will watch it. <laughs> I don't know, man. From I, what I'm seeing on the, on the socials. Everyone's kind of into it. No, they're kind of pissed. Pissed, but they're like, pissed. I'll watch it. Pissed. They're pissed, but. I don't know, man. Still I'll, gonna I'll watch give it, it one. Still going to watch it. You'll watch the whole thing, I bet. No. Pissed I'll, the whole time, but you'll watch it. No, I'll give, I'll give it one episode. I'll give it a look sees for one. A little peek sees for one, but that's about it. Um, Now that euphoria I'm into. So into whatever the fuck's going on there dude, um, on HBO. Knows, bro. Okay, chaos. Who chaos, knows, dude. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. 
So we'll see. Uh, the other thing, everybody else, if, dude, if I see this fucking face app one more time from people. I can't, man. It is fucking scary. I am scared to do it. I'm not doing it. Because it looks too realistic? It looks too realistic, and I can't. It's like the Rolling Stones. Like I can't get people's face as older people right. out of my mind, out especially head, yeah. the girls. Yeah. Where I'm like, yeah, like that's what you should look like right now. Right. Like they did it on like Christy Brinkley, not Christy Brinkley, but um, these people, Gabrielle Union, these people that are older and should look a lot older than they look, yeah. right? And they did the face app on it. It's like, that's what you're supposed to look like. Right. So fucking crazy. It's crazy, man. I, I, I think about the other element to it. Um, and I know Chuck Schumer is, is calling on the feds to look at it on the app and the facial recognition element of it. But uh, I, I refuse to do it. It's, it's everybody did it. Now it's just like, eh, I'm good. I can't. I'm good on this whole fucking shit. I can't. To be honest with you, you know. Anytime, anytime something trends like that, I immediately like go the other way though. Yeah. That's like my stupid. I don't, I don't want to know what I, I would shit, look like but with that, all that shit. I don't want to know. Yeah. Um, it's so realistic. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. I mean, you're going to start to get into some weird shit Whoa. now with the deep fake shit yeah. and all of that. And that's what it felt like to me. And I'm just like, holy Shit, there were some of them where I was like, who is that that they're even with? Is that an older guy yeah. or is that? I got a, I, so I got, can't I got sent anything. something from uh, one of my buddies, uh, Dakota Meyer. Mm -hmm. He was in, uh, actually wasn't a Range for Teen, he was a producer Range for Teen. But uh, uh, obviously Medal of Honor recipients, um, all that stuff. And, and I got a serious message from somebody who said, hey man, what's up with Dakota? Maybe you should reach out and talk to him. And I was like, why? Why? And I was like, I, I follow Dakota on social media. And they were like, man, he looks awful these days. Like, really, really awful. And, uh, and I was like, all right, man, I'll, I'll look. And I looked on all the, his, like, his social media, you know. And I hit this guy back. And I'm like, can you send me what you're seeing? Because I'm not, I'm not seeing it. He sent me a fucking old man picture. And mm -hmm. he couldn't tell. He thought that was Dakota coming out of the hospital. And I was just like. You're kidding me. All right. Well, that's stupid. But, um, but that's, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry. But this is the problem is people are dumb. Um, people are real dumb. People are real dumb for the most part. But uh, yeah, it's too realistic. I don't want to do it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm out on that one. Not I, even I for I'm fun. Too, too not late. even for fun by myself. Yeah. Too late to post for sure. Yeah. Um, again, I was just going to put a picture of like a gravestone i put something on my on facebook that just said look i want to see pictures of people crowning yeah at birth mm -hmm. i want to see them their heads coming out of the vagina show me that show me the very first seconds of your life on this earth right that's what i really want to see i don't want to see you as a, a 95 year old man i want to see your head being squeezed out into the like the, the very first look like your eyes looking up mm -hmm. at the world, you know? Yeah. Out of a vag. That's what I want to see. Uh, do you have a crime corner, Jabes? Oh, my gosh, I do. Now, listen. I can't not do this one because so many people D millions, sent it. Millions of people sent, sent it this to in. me. So, um, I'm going to have to. I've got... One, two, three, four, five detectives working on this case. Oof. I know. List them. Carl Regal. Yeah, Carl. J.W. Fredenberg. Get it, Freds. A Cassness 21. You betcha. Mr. John Browley. Yeah. S.J. Thanson 2. You guys. Okay. You guys. Yep. All of you. Those are their handles. No, I know On that's their Instagram. hand. Is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, from, I'm, I'm waiting not, for the rest of it. Of like, all right. That's not their name, except for Carl. I, obviously. And probably Mr. John Browley. But anyway. Yeah. So meth gators, okay? Yeah. Tennessee police warn flushing drugs could create hyper-aggressive 
alligators. Ooh. Folks, they say, please don't flush your drugs, okay? Um, a police department in Loretto. Hope I'm saying. Laredo? No, not Laredo. Okay. That's in Texas. This is in Tennessee. Loretto, uh, Tennessee, is asking residents to for refrain from flushing drugs, such as methamphetamine, um, <laughs> down the toilet <laughs> because it could go. Um, so, f- folks, please don't flush your drugs, okay? Our sewer. Our sewer guys take great pride in releasing water that is cleaner than what is in the creek, but they are not really prepared for meth. Mm. Ducks, geese, and other fowl frequent our treatment ponds, and we shudder to think what one all hyped up on meth would do. Oh, a gator? Well, they're talking about ducks and geese, but then the post warns that meth could make its way into Shoal Creek down the Tennessee River in North Alabama into the body of alligators. Okay. Um, furthermore, it made, a f- it, uh, made it far enough we could create, if it made it far enough, we could create meth gators in Shoal Creek. Ah. Uh. <laughs> and Tennessee River down the nut, uh, da, 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 and they they said in North Alabama they've had enough methed up animals in the past few weeks. Blammo, meth squirrel. Yes. Uh, so they've had enough uh, methed up animals without our help. So if you need to dispose of drugs, just give us a call. And we'll make sure they are disposed of in a proper way. Now, now here's a couple things. Yeah. A couple things. I'm going to stop you right there. If you have any drugs, not meth, uh, not blow, you have any pills you need to get rid of? Obviously, that's P.O. Box 3793, Wilmington, North Carolina, 28406. Sure. Do sure, not give sure. them to, to wherever those fucking people are. Uh, if you have syrup, too, that's you got a little uh, codeine syrup. Toss that on, on our way as well. But... Uh, uh, so I'm going to slide it on over for you for the other facts there, Javes. Right, right. Um, so the other thing is, gosh, you think they're going to call the police if they need to dispose of their drugs? No. I just cannot picture a meth head. It's not that they want to dispose of them, by the way. So this happened, this whole thing started because drug, uh, the cops busted in on this resident that they got you know, got a call about yeah, and they found them flushing their drugs down the toilet. The police are in your house. That's why they're flushing it. Yep. They don't want to just get rid of it for no reason. Yeah. You have to be in the house. Yes. For them to flush it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is not going to stop. And gosh, I hope, I hope I get to see some kind of methed up gator, not attack, but, just see him, but around, yeah. Jones and we've we, we've still got that Jones. gator in our pond. Maybe we, we could do. throw him it's a little fine. meth. See what there happens. There you go. Uh, they caught the Chicago one, the, the Chicago gator that was in the the lake. Okay. It was uh they they named it uh, Chance the Chance oh, the Snapper. Chance the Snapper. And uh, at Wrigley Field, they had the guy who caught it uh, throughout the first the, the animal handler. Throughout the first pitch at Wrigley Field. That's a nice thing. That is a nice thing. That's great. It's a real nice thing. That's a real nice thing. But whenever the police or anyone else say, hey, man, call us if you have drugs. Nah. Or give them back. Or Mm -hmm. I see those commercials about take your pills in here. That never happens. Uh, The other thing that that never happens was uh, two weeks ago in Georgia and Atlanta on the highway, a Brinks truck door flipped open. Thousands of dollars spilled Shut out onto up. the highway. Everybody pulled over and just started uh, scraping uh, yeah, money off yeah, the highway. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the police put out a thing that said, hey, guys, just a reminder, it's illegal to keep it. So if you have some of this money. Sure. Just bring it on. Bring it on in. Down, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there was some asshole who brought in like three or four hundred bucks. Why is he the asshole? Come on, man. Go see. Go spend it. Live a little. Sure. Live a little. Sure. Just like Rihanna says, live your life. Hey. I'm steady chasing that paper. Live your life. Yeah. So, I look, with the drugs and the money and things like that, like, 
no, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna turn that shit in. Nobody's gonna stop doing that. Uh, and, and to those gators out there, look, gators are overweight animals. They could use a little meth. Now the guy with the squirrel, that's a different sitch. Sure. Uh, Mickey Mickey J. Polk did get arrested and he's out, so we're gonna try to get a hold of him. Right. Oh, he's out. He is. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if we can set up an interview because we were, we were close last time. Right. Uh, Gosh, but he's, he, he he's out now. Back. He made yeah. bail. Okay. So we're gonna try to get him on the show and get that into it. That would be it. amazing. But uh, I'm pretty pretty positive that um, D's nuts. I think we can get him on. I don't want to. Jinx it. Okay. But I think we can get him on. Okay. Uh, if we gave him a proper time and a call in and all that stuff, like, I think we can get Mickey on. Mickey J. Polk on. Because we're Facebook friends still. <laughs> we're still bros on Facebook. So <laughs> that means something in this world, Jay. Oh, yes. It's a bit, it's a bit of that's, currency. That's a, that's a big bit of currency. That is the Bitcoin of this world. So, you know. Um, I want to, I want to talk about this Grimes thing too, because this, this reminds me of something you would possibly attempt. Okay. What? She had part of her fucking eye removed. Um, she said she had a, and this is in people magazine. So like, could she be being hilarious? I don't know. P- people magazine would be a weird spot to do it in. Sure. Uh, so she had part of her eyeball removed in an experimental surgery to cure Seasonal depression. That's what you have. Seasonal depression? Yeah. Um, not in like a real way. I kind of joke about it. But yeah. Really? I mean, not like I need medication or anything. But I definitely uh, grew up in constant sunshine. Yeah. No seasons. And so out here, when you can't leave your house for anywhere besides California month, you know that, right? I get really, it's really sad. Anywhere besides California. So, ha- so to, to cure, seasonal- she's 31. No. Um, she was talking about her fitness and health regimen in a new interview. Uh, she's doing an Adidas campaign with Stella McCartney. Obviously, they passed you over somehow. Oh, yeah. Gave it to Grimes. Yeah, well. Uh, she said, I eliminated all blue lights from my vision through an experimental surgery that removes the top film of my eyeball and replaces it with an orange ultraflex polymer that my friend and I made in this lab this past winter as a means to cure seasonal depression. Whew. A, I would not do that. Man, that's and B, that's fucking stupid. Something went wrong. That would really, yeah, grimes my gears. Mm, grimes. Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, God, she really gets deep into this shit. She said, "I first maintain a, a healthy cellular routine where I maximize the function of my mitochondria with supplements such as NAD Plus, whatever the fuck that is." Ooh, you know what? She sounds like afflicted. What's afflicted? It, uh, it was a documentary series on Netflix, but it was all about these people that, um, are just afflicted with these really weird diseases. Like, uh, cell phones give them insane migraines. Like if anyone has any cell phone, you know, but is that mental or is it real mental? Oh, so, and so they'll go like doctor after doctor, they'll do all these experimental procedures right yeah to try and fix these weird things that they have like one girl thinks that she has mold like in her body and so if she is like like inside so she does all these weird Oof. electronic like you know there's people that cater to these afflicted people that yeah. they'll do it sure and they pay so much money to go to these like weird retreats or like you know get the the mold like shocked out of your body or all this fucking weird shit or there's a town i forget where it is but um there's a town where everyone that lives there there's like no cell towers so everyone there like there's no they don't use electricity there it's so it's a town full of these people that think that electric like the guy from is it not breaking bad but oh uh better call Saul. So it's like him where, right? Where you have to put the battery in the mailbox. So that's all fake. Right. But 
there are there is a town where people like him could go and live and they won't they don't use any electricity or cell phones or anything like that because they all have this thing so, so she sounds like she's afflicted so, so she has a cellular routine. You're fucking retarded. I was. It, so here's the thing. I, I was trying to think about her because like I, I've seen I've actually seen her in concert. She opened up for somebody a long, long time ago. She was great. Super fucking weird. Um, but great. And I was like, man, isn't she dating? Isn't she the one who's dating Elon Musk? Mm-hmm. And it is. It's yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. So like, I mean, because uh, she goes on to say from that point. Um, like she said, this helps from a ATP and it's incredibly visceral. Right. And then she says, I spend two to four hours in my deprivation tank. This allows me to astroglide into other dimensions, past, present or future. Um, but then after that, she doesn't work out. I've got to work in the afternoon though. She does do one to two hours of sword fighting sessions with her trainer. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> yeah. So I um, I don't know how I got compared to this person at all, but seasonal depression. I didn't read the rest of it until I'm not now, getting but fucking surgery. I'm not even taking med. I don't even take medication for it. All right, I will say this. Right, I think Elon Musk is a genius. She probably would not have done this without consulting with him first, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe he's on to something. Maybe they're on to something. Have you ever put on a pair of those uh, orange, those shitty sunglasses they sell you on TV where it's just like you can see everything in HD yeah. driving down the highway? Yeah. I genuinely felt better when I had those on. I had a pair for a road trip one time. It's not the color that I'm seeing. It's the fact that I can't go outside and have fresh air and like do things like. Maybe. Other than inside. It might be the color, man. It might be the color of the world. Because look, if you walked outside and it like because you hate that it's hot and muggy and all that stuff. So does everybody else. Right. Right. But let's say you saw it in a different color. Like, for example, when we pull into the parking lot, our, our, par- our parking lot here at the office, at this at the brand new studio is gravel. OK, mm-hmm. when I get out and I'm standing on the gravel, I feel fucking 20 degrees hotter than when I'm standing in my own driveway for some reason. Okay. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with where I'm at. It's a fucking, you know, eight, eight minute drive. Why is that? Mm-hmm. Something about it that, it, you know. There's something about gravel that I'm like, ah, man, this feels dusty and hotter than, than a normal driveway. Right. With colors, I remember I was on a, a, a road trip that I, was, I wasn't really looking forward to. We just had to get there. And uh, I think it was from Vegas to Denver, maybe. Um, either way, I wore, I forgot my sunglasses. I stopped at one of those gas stations and I got the, the sunglasses as seen on TV on the right. side of the box. And I wore them and like, it's one of the greatest road trips I've ever had. I don't know why I felt better just wearing those okay. fucking things, man. Okay. But uh, it helped me see the world in a different light. I have to imagine if you're dating Elon Musk mm-hmm. and all the, cause he's a big sim world guy as well, where it's just like, all right, this, none of this is real, but we can get to this other dimension. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're the ones that are doing it right. Don't you think that he would have the answers versus anybody else? Um, yeah, but I think he would also feed into this fucking, you know, rich people, weird, afflicted shit. Okay. Now, I'm not going to get down on the sword fighting classes. Weird. I think they're both fucking weird. <laughs> like, in real life, I think they're fucking weird. And I think that he would be like, oh, okay, like, you don't feel good. Like, your cells don't feel good. Okay. Go no, ahead, I'm do gonna, whatever you want. Man. I I I'm gonna be honest. No. I, I'm I, I might side with this maybe. I might side with this theory for, for a little bit. I, I would love to sit down and talk to him about this. Of like, hey man. Are they even still dating? Yeah, they're still dating. Okay. This is out this is out right now. Okay. So I'm I'm this is I'm just reading this right out of people, but uh 
And everything she's doing, she, she said in her studio, she's outfitted with the highest grade of red light. It's pretty much a thousand square feet um, of an infrared, like that infrared that kind of in, in those saunas, you know? Mm-hmm. And that helps with creativity and all the other shit. Maybe there, maybe there is something to it. No, you say no, huh? Mm-hmm. It might be, but I don't think that's the real issue. What about smells, though? Watch Afflicted. That's all I'm going to say. I'll watch it. But, but what about smells? If I, wa- I, if I walk into a shittier room or a restaurant, right, or a, a hotel, and it smells amazing, and there's an amazing smell there, mm-hmm. I'll automatically think that it's less shittier. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, so maybe it's the same with lights for, for her. No, and they have anti-depression lights for seasonal depression. They have those already. They do? Yes. Yeah, so I she's didn't know just that. putting it inside her eye. Okay. Hey, man. I guess. I like it. And those deprivation tanks, you know I'm there for those. That's just all like pri- I love those privileged, things. whiny, fucking spoiled shit to it's, me. It's 20 bucks. It's 20 bucks to go sit in the deprivation No, chamber. I'm saying for her. That's just privileged. Oh, the sword whiny fighting? Whiny. Yeah. Bullshit. I mean, I can't get down on the sword fighting, obviously. Um, yeah. But uh, maybe the, the light thing. Mm-mm. There's something there. Where is, where is this place? Uh, I don't know where it's at. So she doesn't say. Where does he live? Um, ugh, bottom of the article, though, it does say she goes to sleep with a humidifier on. It's a little much. There's a, that's a lot to that mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. That's exactly. a Exactly. Oof. Watch Afflicted. That's <laughs> fucking Grimes right now. Whoever's with her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a Musk. whole fucking thing. Like <laughs> the cellular shit in the morning, the like surgeries to get. It won't end, by the way. That will not fix it. And that's the thing with Afflicted. Like they never get to the end of it because they like being. Okay. They need to have some kind of sickness. It's like their identity. Yeah. So it won't ever end. You won't ever get to the end of it and be like, that fixed it. She'll have to try something else. She'll have to do something else. She'll have to go to some other fucking thing because that's how she is. You know what I'd like to do is a podcast inside a deprivation chamber with you, like a tank, one of those water tanks where you're in one pod, I'm in the other, and then we talk about it. As I'll know, I remember that bird box challenge when we did. Mm-hmm. Um, that one was weird. Super weird. You yeah. lost your mind. Yeah. So wait, how does that work in the deprivation? We do it and then talk about it later? No. I, you, you, I think you put two mics in there. Um, and, that then, and then the purpose, do a show. Doesn't it? Yeah. It does, but, you know. You're only listening to yourself and uh, man. Oh God, you don't want to hear that. You don't yeah. want to hear what I'm. Nothing else. No. You wouldn't hear the like the air conditioning going on right now. Nothing. Mm-mm. No lights. No nothing. Nope. You did it though, right? What? Did you go? No. Oh, you didn't. You Mm-mm. never went. I, did Mm-mm. I use your cards? Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. I use your cards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could you get through an hour of it? You think? No. Nah. Nope. People freak out. You know that, right? I'm sure they do. I just like, I don't, I mean, I sleep with podcasts in the ear. Like I cannot have total. That's what I'm saying. Like I cannot have total silence. You're and always just be plugged in all day there long. Thinking about stuff and having that just be it. Nope. 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 Is that why you're, you're plugged in all day long? Mm-hmm. No shit. Yeah. Cause it's your own thoughts. You don't want to. I just don't. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm trying to get to the, the, the crux of it, you know, to, to understand. Because I would love to do a, the, the chamber with you just to hear whatever weirdness yeah, comes yeah. out of you. Yeah, I could do it for a little bit. that Bird Box episode? I could do it for a little weird. bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not plugged in all day. Yeah. I'm not plugged in all day. Okay. So, but when I'm trying to go to sleep, and a lot of people do this, is like put on something that's just boring. You know, because the TV is just too, like, bright and keeps a lot, you a lot of up. people go to, the, the, to, to sleep with the TV on. Yeah, like that's, and that that's keeps like a me thing. up. 
Okay. Because it's like bright, it's big, it's in your face, whatever. So I have to like have the darkness and then have something in my ear that takes my mind off of things. Okay. Yeah, the chamber. We we should do one live from a chamber. Fuck, I forget the name of the company here. Oh, so we just Float? say it. Uh, rest. Rest float. Rest, rest float. Spa floats. Spa float. Float spa. No, I think it's, it's something rest. Either way, I, I bet you they, they would let us do it. Yeah. But you, wouldn't, you couldn't get through the hour though, right? I don't think I can get through the hour, but I would do it. All right. Well, let me ask you this. If I got you a thing, would you go and then do, report on how trippy it was like on the show? Yeah, or like I said, we could record ourselves. Like I could record myself like what I'm saying. Saying true, true rest. rest. There it is. I true rest. Record, yeah. I like that place. I could record what I'm like, talk myself through it and record that. Because you know what you can hear is your own self breathing. Yeah. No. So you can hear your breathing patterns. You wouldn't do that either. Mm, no. Okay. No. <laughs> Man, isn't it? I don't it? like a massage. I'm just too. I'm just it's, it's weird. Like later on in life, uh, I'm kind of starting to think that Elon Musk maybe has the answers. And the sword fighting thing's really fucking weird. Super weird. Because I don't know when that would come into your day to day life, you know? Like if somebody, you know, ran into your house and you attacked him with a sword, I mean, it's a baller move. Right. But you don't right. see a lot of people stabbing people with swords, old school wise. Sword fighting. So I'm down. Let's do one in a tank one day. Okay. All right. True rest. True rest. True rest. We can do it live from True Rest. There we go. Let's see what happens. Uh, James, weird show. It took a weird turn at the end, but I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. Do we? I have- like. I love all this weird shit. I of really what? do. Of, of grinds of, and stuff. Tr- no, like trying to get your mind to go someplace else, and why, and how to keep it off of things. Like how to. How to cure yourself from thinking about other things or take away from common day-to-day worries and things like that. Uh, I, I find it all like super fascinating. Yeah. Because I, I think this is probably just another trick for her, you know? Yeah. Of like, hey, if it works for you, congratulations and all that shit. But right. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always fascinated by it. And I think he's on the cutting edge of everything. Right. And it's like, man, if there's somebody I would trust to do it, I'd be like, all right, cool, man. Let's fuck that up together. Right. You know? Right. Love to, ha- love to have him on the show. I don't know if that's ever possible, but we'll see. We got to get bigger. You got to subscribe on YouTube. There you go. There you go. Make Elon come on the show. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.